We are back with another week of Life Groups. I just want to welcome everyone, if, this, if you're a first time visitor, and if you always come, we just want to welcome you tonight. Look around though, if you see someone missing, you know the routine, you know what we do here on, on our channel. Send someone a text message and say, listen, we're having Life Group. You can go to your YouTube app, or you can go to the, your desktop, or your tablet, or whatever your device you have. Um, type in Fountains Church, You'll see the logo on the left, click on it, then find the effortless change icon. Click on that and you'll be able to look at the message for tonight. Also, while they're there, let them know, go ahead and hit that um, subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so they'll be updated with anything we post online. Well, let's just go ahead and pray. Lord, we just thank you. We come before you in awe, Lord God, knowing that you're going to do something magnificent tonight in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been talking about effortless change this whole year, and we're not going to stop now. But if I, if you have experienced some change in your life, we want to hear from you guys. Leave comments, share, leave, hit that like button on Facebook, whatever you got to do. Um, but we want to hear back from you. Also, we want you to share the message with other people so their lives can be changed as well. But I like what we're going to talk about for the next two weeks. It's called, Where's My Seed? And I love it because... Um, Jesus is talking about a parable in this passage of scripture and, and telling that this parable about the sower, um, it's for his disciples, but essentially it's for us. And so what the Bible says in Mark chapter four, verses 14 through 20, it says, the farmer sows the word. Some people are like the seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, heal the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Some 30, some 60, some 100 times was what was sown. And so what's so cool about this is, is that the whole kingdom of God and our Christian life and the victory that we have and our success is based on um, simply taking God's word and sowing God's word into our heart. Now, I know this passage talks about, you know, um, the farmer. I know none of you guys have no interest in being a farmer. If you do, that's cool. I have no interest in being a farmer, but I believe that the principles that are applied from a farmer's from a farmer's standpoint of view, we can apply in our lives too. And it's all about how the kingdom of God works. And I believe the kingdom of God works based on his word. And so I think that if we simply just collaborate um, and let the word of God develop inside of us, we will change effortlessly. And so, you know, I think about this. I walk out my house every morning, and I have these two plants in my front yard. Both of them are dead. I use no water on them at all. I always think about watering them, but sometimes I'm just too lazy to go around the side of the house and cut the water on. So guess what? I have to settle with the results of me not watering these plants. I have to settle with the results that this is the way they're going to look because I don't take care of them. Well, yet... um. It is essential. It is it's the same in the spiritual realm. You know, people are constantly surprised at the outcome. You know, the funny thing is, is that we've been praying to God, asking God, um, but we haven't taken his word. And the promises are there and they are for us to be sown into our lives. You know, we don't we don't hold on to scriptures anymore. We don't hang on to God's promises anymore, you know. But there's benefits in knowing the scriptures that God promises us in his word, you know. Specifically, if it helps you to share with someone else as well, you know. You may have to refresh your memory bank and look over scriptures every once in a while. Put it on your screensaver on your phone or just put it on your notepad just to keep your memory refreshed on what the word of God says about this or that. You know, when you have symptoms of sickness in your body, let's say you get sick or you have symptoms of it, you know, 
I don't think it's sufficient enough to just lay there and say it and say to yourself, you know, in the Bible, I think somewhere in the Bible, it says, you know, that I was healed. No, it's essential to know what that scripture is and to place it directly in your heart. You know, um, for example, Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. If you got uh, if you're sick, you can use this. Surely he took up our pain and he bore our suffering yet we consider him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed you know that's that word is a seed you know in Luke chapter 8 um, verse 11 it says you know, this is the meaning of the parable that we just said, that the seed is the word of God. So you take that seed, which is the scripture in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 through 5, and you place that seed in your heart. You know, a seed is useless if a farmer doesn't place it in the right place. Like if he places a seed on the table and waters it every day, it's not going to do anything. He has to intentionally place that seed into the ground for him to see it grow. Just like us, we have to intentionally place the word of God, which is the seed, and we have to plant it in our heart and meditate on it and watch it grow and spring up inside of you. You know, the funny thing is, is that the average person um, isn't meditating on God's word. Why? Because we live lives. We are busy with school. We are busy with work. We're busy with our families. And sometimes we kind of push the word of God on the back, in the back. You know, we have to begin to spend more time, not just time, quality time, but a quantity amount of time on his word. I know life gets so busy and I know we get so tired sometimes, but we have to keep God's word before us. You know, um, you might say, well, this says that in the Bible or this says that somewhere. You know, the word of God must become a revelation to you. It must become life to you. The word of God must become alive. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5 must become alive in you when signs of sickness comes in or whatever the, um, the, the um, situation may be. That scripture needs to come alive inside of you. You have to take the promises like a seed, plant them in your heart and meditate on them and see God's word work just like a farmer. He plants that seed in the ground and he begins to water it because he knows that the outcome is going to be something great. He's going to produce a harvest. Just like us, we need to begin to take God's word, plant it in our heart, and watch it work. Well, listen, thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you received something. I want you guys to have a discussion with your group tonight. I want you to talk about this. And everyone may not have an answer, but this is why we're here together to help one another with this question. Share with the group a scripture that you stand on in critical situations.